Why don't you need first aid to pass step one in 2025? Hello friends, if you're new here, my name is Malki Assad, a plastic surgery resident in the US, and I scored 271 on my step one, in the old days when step one used to have a score. And if you've watched my videos on how to prepare for the step one, you've seen that I usually advocate to study first aid to prepare for this exam. However, I recently changed my perspective on how to approach the step one exam, especially when it comes to first aid and other books. And in this video, I'll share with you four main reasons why you should not study first aid when preparing for the step one exam. The first reason you don't need first aid to study for step one is that step one now is pass fail. In the old days, step one score used to be one of the main factors that program directors use to filter applicants and invite applicants for interviews. However, now step one is only pass fail. So you don't need every single possible resource that can increase your score. You just need to have the knowledge and pass. And first aid, although it has multiple pieces of information that can help you increase your score, the value of this information is not as important these days with step one becoming pass fail. And I'm someone who does not like to have my students suffer. So I like them to pass and have the knowledge with the minimal amount of resources that can get them there. And with step one being pass fail, I don't see a reason to study first aid. The second reason why I don't think you should study first aid for step one in 2025 is because it does not have the explanation. Many students actually used to tell me they suffer when studying first aid because they don't understand what this book is about. First aid teaches you isolated facts, which are helpful for quick review of topics, but you have to be very careful if you don't know these topics to start with, because it will seem as if you're reading a language you've never read before. And even when I used to recommend studying first aid for step one, I always recommended not starting with first aid because it's very challenging to understand the concepts without very good understanding of these before. And many students also struggle to take these isolated facts to being able to answer the questions. And that's why when I talk to students, sometimes they tell me, well, I know the information, but I can't solve the question. And studying in a book or a first aid style could be the reason for that. Because you know the information, you know this isolated fact, but you can't generalize it to answering the question. Because unlike many medical school exams, step one does not test just a fact. It tests a clinical scenario. And with that in mind, studying these isolated pieces of information doesn't necessarily translate in better ability to answer any questions. The third reason why you should not spend your time on first aid when studying for step one is that it's not in a question and answer style. If you watch my videos or videos from other influencers about USMLE, you'll see one common pattern between our advice, which is active learning. You don't learn what you don't know by just reading. And that is a big problem with books. The better form of learning is active learning, such as studying in the question and answer style. Because when you read the question, you try to find the information, then you read the answer, and in that process, your mind started looking for the information and the retention for the information, even if you don't know the answer, is better. Also, another huge advantage of question banks over books like First Aid is that the questions are asked in the way that it's asked on the exam. So you're not learning an isolated fact by itself, you're learning it in the way that it's tested on the exam, and also you're learning why the other options are wrong. And most question banks like UWorld or Ambos give you an explanation of why this option was correct, why the other options are wrong. And in my opinion, this is a much better way of learning. Also, if you do question banks in the way that I recommend, which is a timed mode, you're preparing yourself for the actual exam. So you're not only solving the questions in the exam style, you're actually preparing yourself for the speed, for sitting down for one continuous hour solving 40 questions in one block, which is a skill you need to develop across your studying. And you would not be able to do that through first aid. And the fourth and the final reason I don't recommend you study first aid for step one is that it's too long. The part you need to study is around 700 pages and that takes a lot of time. And if you're someone who studied first aid, you know that going through these pages is not like going through other types of books. Each page, because it's filled with so much information, takes a lot of time. Personally, I used to spend almost 12 hours of studying a day just going through 10 pages of first aid. Because if you just rush it quickly, you won't benefit from studying it. So you either have to study it very well, which will take you a lot of time, or you study it faster and superficially and you won't get the real benefit from it. And you also have to review it. So that adds a month or two to your studying period. And I'm sure you are like most medical students, short on time. So the question is not whether first aid is a good book or not. I really believe it's a good book. The question is, will skipping first aid hurt my chances of passing the step one? And I believe the answer to that is no. Skipping first aid in 2025 
to study for step one will not hurt your chances of passing step one as long as you focus very well on the other useful resources to study for this exam again i have nothing against first aid i think it's a phenomenal book but it's so much additional burden on students studying for step one without really significant benefit and some might say well i'm using first aid to build a really good base so i can tackle step two and get a high score on step two and my answer to those people i don't think first aid will build your base to get a good score on step two what i think will build a good base for you in step one knowledge to get a higher score on step two is understanding the concepts very well, having a really good connection between the different topics, which is built with a question bank, not with a first aid book. So to summarize with all due respect and with me believing that first aid is a great book, I don't think you really need it to pass for step one because it's too long, it takes so much time. Step one now is pass fail, so you're not dying to get a high score it doesn't have an explanation and it's very hard to understand as a first resource and four it's not built in a question and answer style and in an active learning mode and i'm sure some students will ask me in that case what do i study for step one i like to follow the minimalist approach which means you study the minimal amount of resources to give you the knowledge and still pass the exam that's why i always recommend studying a question bank you have options like UWorld or Amboss, and if you have to pick one between the two, I recommend UWorld. We recently finished a phenomenal resource for Step 1 applicants, which is a list of the high yield topics covered on the Step 1 exam for literally every subject. And the best part is these notes are fully free. And the way to get them is click on the link in the card above or the description below, fill your information, and you will start receiving these notes delivered to your inbox fully for free. And we made a course that goes along with these notes. It's a live seven day course that will cover all the high yield topics covered on the step one exam in every subject. And the reason we made this course is because I feel people just struggle so much with knowing what is important and what is not. And I wanted to share with you these concepts in the notes format and in a live interactive bootcamp that can explain to you what is difficult to understand. And some might say, well, you're selling stuff to us. I don't want to buy, which is totally fine. That's why we made the notes fully free. And we also made this course 100% satisfaction guarantee, which means if you attend the first session and if you're not happy, we'll give you your money back. No questions asked because we personally don't care about a student not signing up or a student getting a refund. What we care about is that you're happy and you're finding value in this course. Make sure to reserve your spot for this course because the spots run out and we keep a limited number of availability to make the course more interactive. And you can sign up to this course by clicking on the link in the card above or the link in the description below. And we also have similar notes and courses for step one that you can find in the description of this video. And finally, some students need one-on-one -on -one help. And for that, check out our USMLE tutoring. We start with a free session. You literally talk to the tutor for free for half an hour to see if this is helping you, if you vibe with the tutor, uh, or if you want to try someone else. Because we understand signing up for a full package is a big commitment. So we made it easy for you to try it for free. And if you like it, you can commit to something more. And you can sign up to this free tutoring by clicking on the link that I'll leave in the description below about our USMLE tutoring page. You reach out to our customer support team who will talk to you and understand your needs so they can connect you with the tutor that best fits your needs. I hope this video is helpful in debunking some concepts about the step one exam. If you still have any questions, feel free to drop them in the comments below or reach out to us at our email info at thematchguide.com. If you find any value in this video, I would really appreciate it if you hit the like button, subscribe to the channel and hit the bell sign so you get notified whenever I post future videos on my YouTube channel. Now, before you go, make sure to watch my other video on how to pass step one by clicking here. And I wish you best luck on your step one exam. Peace.